Hi everyone, it's Nick Pavlov here. In today's video, I will talk about the Microsoft Fabric Warehouse. The data warehouse is an important element in everything that we do. Data has to be stored somewhere, right? So we will first understand what the Fabric Warehouse is, and then I will show you how to create and set up a sample warehouse. So first, let's talk about what Microsoft Fabric Warehouse is. Data Warehouse in Microsoft Fabric is a repository in which you can store structured data. The Fabric Warehouse is a high-speed SQL-enabled analytics engine that places your data in one lake in the Delta Parquet format. And this is very important because the Delta Parquet format gives you that flexibility and speed. Warehouse offers a familiar environment to those who work with SQL, making data manipulation and organization an easy process. So let's take a step back here and talk a little bit about a data warehouse and compare it with a regular database. A lot of people seem to confuse these two things. So a data warehouse in, in the traditional sense, right, is a large storage system where data from different sources is collected, processed, and stored. A warehouse is built specifically for analysis and reporting. It gathers data from various departments of a company and makes it available all in one place. The data is often cleaned up and organized in a way that makes it easier for businesses to get insights and analyze data. Now, a regular database, a SQL Server database, for example, is more about recording daily operations. Think of it as a detailed log of a company's daily activities. It captures every sale, every purchase, every user sign up, and so forth. So a database is designed to manage data in real time and make sure that the company's operations run smoothly. So if I can make a simple analogy, a regular database is like a diary in which you write down everything that happened that day. And a data warehouse is like a library that keeps all the records from all the different diaries and organizes them and helps you to understand the bigger picture over month or even years. So that was a quick reminder of what a warehouse is. Now let's go back to the Microsoft Fabric warehouse and compare it with a lake house in Microsoft Fabric. In this table, you can see the key differences between the two. The warehouse and lake house in Microsoft Fabric, they serve different purposes. The warehouse is optimized for SQL. It supports both read and write operations on traditional SQL data types stored in Delta format. On the other hand, the lake house is more versatile in terms of languages. It supports SQL, Python, Scala, R, and Spark. So the lake house mainly focuses on reading data and can handle a wider range of data formats like CSV, JSON, Parquet, in addition to Delta files, of course. So in short, the warehouse is your go-to solution for structured data operations using SQL, while Lakehouse offers more flexibility with mixed data types and processing languages. That's the key difference. So what are the key benefits of Microsoft Fabric Warehouse? So number one is it's tailored for SQL users. If you're comfortable with SQL and are looking for a powerful platform for data analysis, then Fabrics Warehouse is for you. Its environment and UI echoes the familiarity of the SQL Server, which a lot of people know how to use. While Python and Spark have their own perks, if your data team leans more towards SQL, the warehouse will be a better choice. Number two is seamless scalability. With Fabric's warehouse, the hassles of scaling are a thing of the past. It offers auto adjustments, ensuring optimal performance without manual intervention. So if you suddenly get a lot more data, your Fabric warehouse will adjust to that automatically. Number three is intuitive data loading. Importing data is straightforward, thanks to options like data pipelines, the copy into command, data flows gen 2 and other traditional ways like uploading csv files of course and using sql data definition and data manipulation commands so there are a lot of different options to import your data into a warehouse i'm going to show that to you a little bit later and lastly fabric warehouse is ideal for the cloud migration the warehouse is perfectly equipped to handle migrations especially if your primary focus is structured data analysis all right, now let's jump to my computer and see how to set up a warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. So here I am in my Fabric workspace and 
first thing what I'm going to do, right? I will go to my personas and I will choose a uh, data warehouse. And then I can go back to my fabric workspace, click new. And then I will have the option warehouse. So I will select the warehouse, which is now in preview, of course. And then it will ask me to give a name to my warehouse, which I am going to give it the name demo warehouse. And this is going to go ahead and provide you a warehouse experience. It might take some time depending on the hardware and speed of your connection. And here is the Fabric Warehouse UI. And this should look kind of familiar to uh, Management Studio because we have our Explorer window on our left, which I am going to drag to the right a little bit so there's more space. So after creating your warehouse, the first thing you got to do is to populate your warehouse with tables. And just as a note, your tables are kept in the Delta Parquet format, which is going to enable the Fabric Warehouse with really good speed. So there are different ways to get data. I have a button here, get data. And what I'm gonna show you today, I'm gonna show you three different ways how to create tables in a warehouse. First, I am going to use uh, regular SQL scripts, right? So I have prepared SQL scripts. You can follow along with me, actually. I'm going to include uh, the sample data and sample scripts in the description section of this video. Right, so that's number one. Number two is uh, we will create a sales table in warehouse by creating a data pipeline and then grabbing that table from Azure SQL Server. So I have an existing a demo database sitting in Azure SQL Server and I'm gonna bring that table into a warehouse. And then number three, I'm going to create a calendar table by using a CSV file which is located in one of my lake houses. And then we will turn that file into a table using a Dataflow Gen 2. So let's go ahead and create four dimension tables using uh, the SQL scripts that I prepared. So for that, what I'm going to do, I will create new SQL query. And this is gonna take me to the query writing section. So what I will do, I will grab one of uh, my SQL queries, which I prepared, and I am going to create four tables. I'm going to paste them right here. So I am creating four different tables, customer, product, city, and version using a simple create table query. So what I will do is I'll click run. So the query is going to run and it will create four tables in my warehouse. All right, so I created these four tables and they are now empty. And they should appear, if I go to schema and DPO is a default schema for all the tables. Obviously, you know, I can set, I can create my own schema, but I, I decided not to and just use a, a default. So if I go to DBO, I can see that if I go to tables, I have these four tables created here. But these tables are empty, right? Because I didn't put any data into that yet. And if I click to the city, for example, you can see that it only has columns, but no data. I will actually go back to my query and name it you want to do that because in real life, you will have a lot of different queries and to know which query did what, it is a best practice to actually name your queries. Created tables, something like that. Now I'll rename it and then I will open a new query. And this time what I'm going to do, right? I am going to populate my four tables with some data. So I'm going to use the insert into the table queries, which I created. Uh, let me copy these tables, sorry, the scripts and put it in here. And this is the code. So I'm basically just inserting some data into my tables. This is random data I just made up. They don't mean anything, just soft drinks, it's random cities, random countries. And I created two versions, actuals and budget. So what I will do, I will run this query. This will probably take uh, a little bit more time because it's actually inserting data into these tables. It was actually pretty quick, eight seconds. As you can see here, what I'm going to do is I will rename this query and I will name it importing data. Now, if I go back to one of my tables, then I can see that it is now populated with data. I have city, I have customers, I have product, and I have version. 
So next, what I wanted to do, right? I wanted to uh, create two more tables. Uh, one of them is the sales table, the fact table. The other one is uh, the calendar table, the date table. To get the sales table, I will create a data pipeline and connect to my Azure SQL server and then grab an existing table from there. My last table, the date table, right? I'm going to use a data flow and get it from one of the lake houses, right? So let's go. What I will do, I will click to get data and then I will go ahead and choose a new data pipeline. And this is going to launch uh, the data factory experience. I'm going to call it pipeline to get sales table. And then this is going to open a data factory experience. So here, what I'm going to do, I will select Azure SQL Server, Azure SQL database, click next. And I will use an existing connection. Um, so I'm going to click next. And then from existing tables, I will only grab sales table. And this sales table has a random made up table that I'm going to connect with the other four tables. So I'm going to click next. I choose date and destination. I am going to do demo warehouse. This is my warehouse, right? And I will load it to a new table because I don't have any existing tables. But if I did, you know, I could have loaded my data into an existing table. Uh, this is a column mapping. I don't need anything here because everything is organized and cleaned up already. But if you want to, you can use this column mapping feature to remove or change the data type of certain columns, right? So I'll click next. And in the settings, I'll click next. And then I will start transfer immediately. Save and run. And this will take some time, right? Uh, the pipeline is running. Probably will take maybe a minute or so. So I'm going to pause the video and then come back when the pipeline will be completed. All right. So my pipeline has completed now. I should have used a smaller sample file. <laughs> I, I put 20,000 records in there, but I should have put a little less data in there, but whatever. Now it's done. I'm going to go back to my data warehouse. It's going to take me back to my warehouse. And now I should see my sales table in the table section of my warehouse. Let me drag this to my right a little bit here. And here's all of the data that I had. This data comes from a SQL server that I have. So in real life, for example, you could connect to a SQL database or any other database uh, that could serve to gather, you know, daily activities and operations. And then you can do an ETL process that will take that data and put it into a warehouse. So now I have five tables in my warehouse. So now what I need is to get my date table. So to get that last table, what I, what I will do is I will use a data flow. I'm going to click to data flow. It's going to take me to a power query experience. Uh, so I'm going to rename this data flow as a uh, data flow to get calendar tables. And what I will do is I will go to get data. I'll click more and I will connect to a lake house. I should have a lake house here somewhere going to type it in here. Here we go. Click Lake House. You know, if you don't have a connection, then you should establish connection. I already have a connection established. So here I'll go to my Sentida Fabric workspace and I'm going to go to one of my lake houses that I have, which is called, I think it's called Demo Lake House. I can't remember where I put it. Let's check this out. And that should be in the file section. Here we go timetable CSV. So I'm going to select the CSV file, open the data flow, and then I'm going to create a data flow, right? The name for my table is going to be just time, right? The only thing that I will do here, the only modification is to use the first row as headers, because right now these are my column headers and they are acting as a first row, right? So I don't want that. So what I will do is I will do use first row as headers, all right. So the data transformation is taking place. 
I am going to make sure that all of my data types now are uh, correct, right? What I want, I have year, month. I mean, this is a simple table, really. Just uh, an example, right? Uh, after these modifications, I will just make sure that I am going to a data warehouse. So if, if you click to your data destination, this shows where you're importing the table. So it is going to my workspace and it's going to my demo warehouse. I mean, I only have one warehouse, so I don't have to worry about it. But in real life, you might have several warehouses. And so in this case, you might want to go to the settings and then make sure that you select the right warehouse. What I'm doing now, I am publishing this data flow. And this is going to take some time too. And so what's going to happen is I am grabbing a file, a CSV file from one of my lake houses, which is sitting in the file section of my lake house, right? And then I'm turning that file into a table using a data flow gen 2 and then creating a table, which is going to sit in my warehouse. So the, the update is happening as you can see, right? And I'm going to pause the video a little bit here. So now we should be done and then I will go to my demo warehouse and here I should see the timetable here. I will click refresh and that should bring the table in here. And if I click on my timetable, here's the table that I now have. All right, so now I have six tables here. Four tables I created using the queries, right? So I created the tables first using the script. And then I used another script to insert data into my four dimension tables. So I populated those tables with data and then I connected to an existing Azure SQL Server database and then grabbed the sales table from there. And then lastly, uh, my timetable, I just shown you how I use Dataflow Gen 2. I got a file, a CSV file, which is located in one of my lake houses and turned it into a table. So now I will click to the model view here. And this is going to take me to the modeling experience. I will close this a little bit here, make this fit to page. And then all I need to do now is to create relationships between the existing tables. So what I will do is I will pause a video a little bit and then create relationships. So I created these relationships right between these six tables. So then after building relationships between these tables, I will click new report. And this is going to open Power BI Desktop in the cloud experience. And here I have a report builder in the cloud, which uh, simulates Power BI Desktop experience. One thing I forgot to do, I will go back here and I will create a couple measures that I need. I'll click new measure. And then I will call my first measure sales amount. And that is going to be a SumX formula in the sales table. And I would like to multiply quantity by price uh, right here. I can click to properties and then click the customer table, find that measure right here. And then I can change the home table to the sales, right? And then I can also do formatting. This will be a currency and I can do two decimals, for example. Um, so I'm going to go back to my report. If I refresh this, I should see that measure appear in here. All right, now I can use this measure to create visuals, right? So let me quickly put up a, a quick little matrix in here using the, the numbers that I have. So I want this to be in values, then I'm gonna go to the product table and then grab brand, product name, put it in here, and then I will put the um, month name in columns. And if I expand this, then I will have a matrix in here. This is a sample data set, of course, but this is how you can build a warehouse. I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe. And until next time.